You know, in this day and age, everybody's listening to their favorite music on their cellular devices because modern technology has advanced. Well, when I was a young kid, I didn't have myself a cell phone. I had me a little gadget called a Walkman. You grab whatever your favorite cassette tape you had, you pop that son of a bitch in there, and I roam the hallways listening to the whole entire album, Minding My Own Business. That's the type of personality I was. In high school, everybody had their own personality. Now, from whatever time it was, 7 a.m. or 8 o'clock in the morning, whatever time it was you got there to start the day, you sit in the cafeteria, you're either listening to your Walkman, playing with your Nintendo Game Boy, uh, reading a book, playing some puzzles, uh, fiddling around with a Rubik's Cube, or playing with your action figures, whatever it is to keep yourself Occupied sometimes even bullshitting with your friends about certain activities either you're gonna do during the weekend or What activities you're gonna do after school or if you're preparing for a test what homework you're gonna have whatever High school was one of those times to where you were beginning to Basically, it's the beginning of growing up. You're starting to develop into a young adult at like 16 17 18 years old and specifically around 17 and 18 is where you start to develop. Now, once you hit the senior year of 18, that's where adulthood starts to develop and come in. And it's where you got to start figuring out what it is that you're going to do after you graduate. Now, back to the whole personality aspect is that either your personality changes over time or it doesn't. For me, I was someone who never necessarily changed my personality at all. I mean, in terms of maturity... That was one thing. I still kept my sense of humor, except I became more grumpier and more uh, foul mouth. Like, I've up the ante with my swearing quite a bit. But I became much more of a lone wolf and surrounded myself with friends that I am much more comfortable with and know who I can trust and in my closed inner circle. They know who they are. Now, the thing is, is that... When you go to detention, sometimes when you go to detention, you do something wrong that you either can't figure out exactly what it is you did, or <clears throat> you go to detention and you have to accept the consequences of a particular action that you did or something that you've said. Either it was something physical or mental, whatever. And when you go to detention, you're either going on a weekend or you're staying after school. It's like maybe five, 4 or 5 o'clock. So you're staying there for a little while. Sometimes you're going to do homework. Read a book, write an essay, however, though you can't necessarily talk to each other because in high school, someone is sitting right there keeping their fucking eyes on you and you just can't do a damn thing. So do your time, keep quiet, keep to yourself, get it done and get home. And just stay out of trouble next time so it won't happen again. But what happens when five random teenagers who don't even know each other at all with, the, with different personalities, like they got their own cliques, they stay in their own groups, but just on a Saturday from, what was it, 8 o'clock in the morning to around 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, whatever the time was, they end up becoming best friends with each other. And the question they ask themselves is, what is going to happen on Monday? Like, what's going to happen that Monday after all this is over? Since the weekend's over, are they going to stay still be friends or are they going to actually you know talk to each other now the thing is, is that that was the question that they've asked themselves what's going to happen monday you want to know you want to know what i would have done sure you might have said hello to each other while you're in your own parties you know you know what you could do on that monday exchange each other's phone numbers talk to each other keep in touch could could do that or if you're too insecure and worried about your own priorities with your groups and cannot even talk to each other anymore. Like, don't even bother. I don't know. It's all up here, exactly, thinking in your head, what is it that they did that Monday? Who knows? All you can do is theorize exactly what they did. But I'm gonna, I want to read to you all a little bit of this dialogue, because not only does this summarize the movie from the very beginning of how it sets it up, but also the conclusion itself of understanding everybody's background. 
Dear Mr. Vernon, we accept the fact that we had to sacrifice a whole Saturday in detention for whatever it is we did wrong. But we think you're crazy to make us write an essay telling us who we think we are. You see us as who you want to see us, in the simplest term, in the most convenient definitions. But we found out that each of us is a brain, an athlete, a basket case, a princess, and a criminal. Does that answer your question? Sincerely yours, The Breakfast Club. End quote. Written and narrated by Brian. I absolutely love this little this little dialogue. It's their little essay. You had to write a thousand words. They didn't, no thousand words needed to be written for a dot for something like this to explain exactly who they are. Like when a principal asks me, "Oh, you need to you need to write an essay explain who you are," I don't need to explain who I am. Who I am is who I, I is who I present myself as with how I speak, my sense of humor, my interactions, my beliefs, likes, dislikes, how I come off, and how respectful. That's who I am. Why well, write about it? But in the end, these five people managed to understand who they are once they got to know each other. You got Bender, Brian, Andy, Claire, and Allison. It's amazing to me how five personalities with different backgrounds, different traits, and different things that they do during the school or outside of each other, you learn exactly why they are there and who they are as humans. Bender is a criminal. He comes from a rough uh, background. His father beats the hell out of him. His mother doesn't give a shit. You saw the markings on him. Uh, Brian, he's a straight A student who his parents think he's always going to be a B. A basket case, Allison. Her parents ignore, simply put. An athlete, Brian. Not Brian, uh, Andy, excuse me. Andy's the one who's get, who comes from an ath who comes from a father who pushes him to the edge to become the best wrestler in the world. Amateur wrestling, not professional, but amateur wrestling. Then you got the princess who is you can say is narcissistic, but her parents going through arguments, uh, confrontations. She don't like be in the middle of it at all. And however, though, the fact that her parents are just going back and forth and she has to be in the middle of all that and people are judging her because her daddy's rich and everything, it says a lot right there. And the thing is, is that even though they all got their personalities, you saw in the beginning of how their parents talk to, talk to their kids. And then later on, how Mr. Vernon, you know, he's playing that stereotypical uh, mean Mr. Principal type of uh, personality. You know, Bender breaking the rules and all that stuff. Brian trying to obey. Andy's keeping himself. Allison's just in the corner, just staying quiet. And uh, Claire just might, trying to, wants, like, like Brian, keep to herself. But the thing is, folks, is that the one thing I love about this movie, and truly enough, is like I said, the personalities, the dialogue, how they interact with each other. It's so amazing how it goes from to funny quirkiness to where it goes into a serious tone explaining their backgrounds and the troubled youth. Because during the 80s, there was a lot of people going through that time, I'm pretty sure of, you know, trying to figure out exactly not only who they are, but their problems outside of school, the problems inside school, how it's going to affect them in the long run. And how they are all explaining to one another and, uh, and literally listening and understanding. It's amazing character develop. It's not only amazing character development, but it's also phenomenal study of each individual in this film. And you can relate to everybody. For a lot of folks out there, you can either be a nerd, you can be a, a jock, um, a, a mental case, a fucking princess, a crook. It doesn't matter exactly what personality you are. It's just that you know who you are and you can relate to them all. From not only your personal backgrounds in, in school from all those years ago, whatever you graduated in, but when you watch this movie, especially during that time in high school, you can relate to the, a personal problem that you were dealing with during those times growing up. That's the beautiful thing about this movie is that you can relate to it. It's a coming of age story to where everybody can relate feel, sympathize, and understand. 
The score for this film is incredible, obviously. You can't go wrong with uh, the way they use Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds. Uh, playing not only that is the intro, but also the outro. So you, for them using that song and incorporating that in this movie really helped elevate it a lot, getting you interested to what the story is going to be about. I love Simple Minds. Fantastic group. So overall, folks, about The Breakfast Club, the movie itself is one of the greatest coming-of-age stories of all time. It's got phenomenal characters. It's got good, beautiful storytelling. It's got development. It's got character study. It's got personalities you can relate to. It's got some funny moments. It's got some sad moments. It's got quirky moments. It's all about exactly who you are. The dot, like I said, that opening monologue that I read, not only does it set your movie right there of what the story is, but it also summarizes the movie. And that's the beautiful thing. It's literally introducing everybody that you were going to be meeting in the movie, and thus, once that S, once that monologue was read again, you understand exactly who everybody is. And you want to know what's cute? How everybody hooked up except for Brian. So, ladies and gentlemen, The Breakfast Club, it's no fucking... It's so obvious I'm giving this movie a 5 out of 5. I've given it a 5 out of 5 a long time ago, and I still give it a 5 out of 5. Because it's one of the greatest coming-of-age movies in existence. It's one of my personal favorites, and that's why I'm talking about it with everybody. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to have to do with my little talk about The Breakfast Club. Uh, let me know down below your thoughts about this movie, and ciao for now.